Now, one of the things you can do in order to predict your monthly cost is to use the Azure Pricing Calculator. This is a built-in web page that's part of Azure that lets you select the services that you intend to use, and it will give you an average cost to determine exactly how much you're going to pay. One of the other cool things that happens, as you'll see a bit later, is when we use the portal, the system will begin telling us how much money we have left in our account or how much credit we have left in our account as our services are running. So you can get a quick look at exactly how much you've spent at that point in time and how much the system estimates that you're going to spend by the end of the month. The pricing calculator URL is shown here on the screen. Let's take a look at it just to see how it works. So here's the pricing page loaded into a browser. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll find a link here for the pricing calculator. This is actually what you'll want to use to be able to check and see how much something would cost if you decided to build a service on top of Azure. So you can see that it's broken down into different modules here that we can pick. So just as an example, let's start with an app service. Now, once I click this, it's going to actually add that to my pricing calculator and then I could just start adding other things to it. So for example, my app service is also going to need a SQL database. And perhaps I might also want to add some different networking pieces to it, or maybe I have some additional content that I would like to deliver. Maybe it's videos, maybe it's Xamarin University and we want to sit on top of this. So let's go ahead and encode and store videos as well. And then I also want to go ahead and maintain some identity and authentication. So we'll add an Azure Active Directory. Now, once I've got all the services that I'd like to add in here, I can then click the close button here to actually close this to then see how much this is going to cost. And so you can see I can start to configure this. For example, here I can say my app service is going to be set up. I'm going to go ahead and put it into the North Central US. And I'd like to go ahead and use the standard tier. Notice there's different tiers here, including the free tier. But I'm going to go ahead and use standard tier so that I get an SLA and I have a certain level um, of support here in terms of the number of cores and how much RAM is allocated and things like that. We'll say we only want one instance, that's fine, and that's going to cost me about $75 a month. I can also add in SSL connections if I want to. In this case, I'm not going to, to do that. I'm going to add in a database. Let's put it in the same location. We'll again have a single database. Now, notice the database is measured with a term here called DTUs. This is the data throughput unit. This is a, a measure that the Azure SQL team created to describe the capacity of a particular performance level across a blended measure of CPU, memory, reads, and writes against a database. And so in this particular case, I have a measurement of five DTUs with two gigabytes of storage per database. And you can see my cost here. As I change my pricing tier, notice my DTU level goes up. This is simply saying that the amount of throughput or the number of transactions that I could perform per minute is going to be significantly higher. So notice I can take it all the way up to premium where I can get 125 DTUs at 500 gigabytes of storage. And you can see that my cost has gone significantly up. Now I'm going to assume that our mobile service is going to predominantly work on the client side, and so we'll, we'll retrieve the data once and then we'll work with it in the app. And so we can use a lower pricing tier for that. And we'll have one database. And that keeps us down to $5 a month. Now let's go ahead and configure our media services. So we're gonna do video on demand and we're gonna do an encoder. And I'm gonna decide how much output we're gonna have. Let's just say that we do maybe 200 gigabytes per month and whether or not we want any indexing on this in terms of minutes. That's gonna bring me to a, a much higher cost here of almost $400 a month that we'll actually be using in order to output our 200 gigabytes of videos. Now maybe we don't really have that much. Maybe it's only 20 gigabytes of, of output per month. Notice how my pricing is now adjusted. And then finally, we've got our Azure Active Directory. Again, I'm gonna put it in the same location here and we're gonna decide our tier. In this particular case, the free tier allows me to have 500,000 objects and I can do 10 apps per user. We can then decide the features that we'd like to take advantage of, whether or not it's multi-factor authentication or whether or not we allow for business to consumer transactions to be conducted and then whether or not we support domain services. I don't need those services for this and so I'm gonna leave those off. 
And so then notice that it tells us what our support options are. And over here, I can get my estimate. So at this point, my estimate is for this simple mobile service that we've allocated here is $133 a month. And then I can decide what do I need to tweak in order to get it within the price range that I really am interested in. I can add more items here if I decide, oh, I actually need some additional data or storage. I can also subtract items by removing them from the calculator. So notice by clicking that, it drops my monthly price down. If I decide I actually am going to do my own encoding and upload them to some other provider. So that's the pricing calculator. It's actually pretty convenient to really quickly gauge exactly how much this would cost. And especially if you're using an existing cloud provider that isn't Azure, you can come over here and get a sense of how much it would cost to transfer those assets over to Azure on a monthly basis. Thank you.